the now former voice actor of Bayonetta in the somewhat successful but certainly not popular AAA gaming standard Bayonetta franchise decided today she wanted to respond to Jason Schreier's report where he claimed to have multiple sources and a physical document detailing her contract offers for reprising the role of Bayonetta 3. In that article, she told Jason via email, I would like to put this whole bloody franchise behind me, quite frankly, and get on with my life in the theater. But like a child who blames everyone else and can't seem to accept any responsibility for their actions, she thought she had a gotcha moment still left in her. As she goes on a lengthy Twitter rant today that truly in her heart of hearts feels like a got him. Even though her Twitter rant factually confirmed Jason Schreier's reporting. And if she thinks she's worth more than Brian Deschart, who got paid $4,000 for a non-union project for a big budget game, and he has credits in games like Cyberpunk 2077 and Red Dead Redemption 2 and Detroit Become Human, all of their lifetime sales actually exceeding the entirety of the Bayonetta franchise, or her replacement, Jennifer Hale, who actually does voice acting work for a living, has credits in so many projects that just listing them from the last three years could take an hour, then she's grossly misunderstood what her value was and is, and certainly that value today is probably in the negative. In fact, if she wants to voice Bayonetta at a convention now, she'll probably have to pay them and Platinum just to attend. But let's just start with the easy stuff in her rant today. She stated her final offer of $4,000 was for some lines and came 11 months after they stopped negotiating. In Jason Schreier's report, he said the final offer was $4,000 for a cameo. Some lines, rather than the entire game, sure sounds like a cameo. Or maybe she just thinks Cameo only refers to that pay-for-message platform some content creators use to help get people's rocks off with personalized message in exchange for money. I don't know. They've been trying to get me on their platform for a while. The thing is, Helena Taylor never said that $4,000 was just for some lines. She very clearly acted as if $4,000 was to voice Bayonetta for the entire game. You don't need to believe me, though. Just listen to Helena tell you herself. And what did they think this was worth? What did they offer to pay me? The final offer to do the whole game as a buyout, a flat rate, was 4,000 US dollars. Objection! Jason Schreier's report also says that she was offered three to four thousand dollars per session for four to five sessions for a total of at least fifteen thousand dollars for the Bayonetta role. Today, she called him a liar in her rant. Then went on to detail how, yes, she was actually offered fifteen thousand dollars for the role. I'm not sure if she understands what the term liar actually means. Jason never said you were offered four thousand per session or five sessions, he said three to 4,000, suggesting it was in the ballpark of 15,000 for the entire gig. But you just confirmed that's exactly what the offer was. I'm just trying to understand where Jason lied. Sometimes they say it just takes one to know one, but if you don't understand how you are lying, maybe it also works that you can't recognize if someone else is lying either. She also goes on to try and debunk what Jason said her ask was by making up a number that is well north of the bare minimum ask Jason referenced. He said in his article that she asked for a six-figure salary. Six figures begins at $100,000. Not content with actually trying to say $100,000 was not her ask, she jumps to the even more ludicrous $250,000, saying she never asked for that and that it's a lie. Never mind that nobody with half a brain actually thought she asked for $250,000, and Jason himself never accused her of such a high figure. The low end was $100,000, and there is zero denying of an ask of at least that much. By the way, Helena also gave us context for how much she got paid for the first and second game, which was right around £3,000 slash euros, or about $4,000 US. 
She was offered three times her original salary in Bayonetta 1 and 2. Alrighty then. She also did this thing where she repeated the livable wage ask, ignoring that for the amount of work she would do, which undoubtedly even the entire game is less than a month, if not, Jennifer Hale would have lost out on many other jobs over this one. It's fair to assume that $15,000 in every corner of the world for what amounts to less than a month of work seems pretty livable. Most of the world is out here working every month to pay bills. Uh, Helena pretending that less than a month's worth of work should be paying all her bills for a year or more. I don't know about you, but I'm supporting three children on just under $20,000 so far this year. Most of you would look at that and think I live on the street. Imagine making that sort of money in a single month for half the work I do. Uh, that's just, I don't know, seems kind of livable to me. But I guess the people you're communicating with, the working class who are buying Bayonetta, don't know what livable means. Meanwhile, Helena hasn't had any voice acting work in the last decade that wasn't Bayonetta, including zero work in the voice acting field in eight years. But we're supposed to believe that her, with her vast knowledge and experience in voice acting, her seven years of education, actually know the true value of voice actors versus other stars in the field, such as Jennifer Hale, who does it for a living. Like, hey, someone get Helena Taylor a popsicle. She might need to cool off a little bit more. Nice. Now, she does go on to repeat the 450 million revenue game sale only claims, Mostly because nobody has really been able to fully debunk the claims. We don't really know how many game sales in total the franchise technically has, but suffice it to say that at least $7.5 million in sales would be needed at $60 a pop to hit her figures. We do know from Nintendo that Bayonetta 2 has only sold a collective $1.5 million to date between Wii U and Switch. So the idea that Bayonetta 1 sold 6 million copies, or let's just frame this a better way. Let's say more than half of the sales of the Legend of Zelda franchise, like literally it sold better than most Zelda games, but magically it wasn't enough sales for Sega to want to fund another game. I mean, it also most Sonic games and, you know, hey... We, we, we still get Sonic game. I, trying to understand the logic connection here on the amount of sales that would have had to happen for Bayonetta 1 that clearly didn't, or Nintendo wouldn't be funding the games. It's... What? Now, I did take a few accounting classes in my day, and I also know how to use a calculator, but I do wonder if her instrument of choice to make these money calculations still relied on the abacus with no actual idea what the beads on each line of an abacus stand for so oh look bayonetta 2 sold 1 million sales on switch yeah let's just slide them all to the left ah yes 300 million in revenue that seems right look at the end helena taylor has lost this before she really even began she had a little bit of credit at the beginning but the moment jason schreier's report came out there was nothing for her to do. She would have best left this alone. It could have blown over. She could have got back to her work in the theater and let it be. But she feels like she needs to set the record straight while basically admitting that the record was correct all along. If she's going to focus on some of the people out there that are taking it to the extreme, then she has really missed the boat because she's going after journalists and calling them, well, a bunch of liars that they're in the pockets of platinum games a company that only has $10 million in capital. Look, say what you will, but the way she is acting is if Platinum Games is a multi-billion dollar company and could pay her whatever the hell she wants. Reality is, she is not going to get paid what she wants because she doesn't understand the value of voice acting. Is it being undervalued? In some avenues. But Bayonetta in particular? Probably not. Anyways, folks, you have a lovely rest of your day. Catch you in the next one.